Alright, welcome back to part 5 of Elden Ring, the ultimate guide. If this is the first time you're watching any of these guides, we recommend that you watch the video linked in the description. Otherwise, if you have any tips of your own, reply reply with your tips to the pinned comment, and then that way we can get a nice uh, list of various other tips that isn't in the video. But with that, let's go on with the episode. And we are heading to Castle Morn, aren't we? Yeah, so Castle Morn, I think, will be the first real legacy dungeon you'll tackle. And by legacy dungeon, what I mean is a big area that you can't use torrent in, for the most part. Um, before we go there, we're going to be grabbing the item at the top of this little slope, which I believe is a smithing stone. I think it's I a golden ring. Yeah. Oh, well in. Um, another way there, we're also going to grab a couple of items from uh, either side of the peninsula. So there's two little beaches. We're going to be grabbing all of those items. And uh, then we'll be heading inside. And there's quite a bit to be doing in Castle Morn, actually. There's a character quest, uh, plenty of stuff to kill, and a dungeon boss. Yep, and we just got a lovely, lovely arteria leaf. Mmm. Satisfying. I, I wonder what they taste like. Uh, like rubber plant is what I think. Yeah, I feel yeah. like they make a nice tea. Nah, <laughs> they're too oh. big and leafy. Too, they're just too. The leaves are too solid. Tea is leaves, bro. I know, <laughs> but like, like, okay, maybe you could make a tea out of it, right? Sure, but I think it'd be bland. It's spicy though. It tastes like bland and spicy. So now we're in Castle Morn. <laughs> Uh, grab this grace and then head into the little room and I think there's some slugs in that room apparently we're resting know, the grace first what you're talking about there ain't no slugs in that room so not I'm talking out my fucking arse then never mind <laughs> going up to the uh, enormous courtyard filled with misbegotten I think is now, the first part of the call although I equipped <clears throat> Luteal the headless there I think actually we use the imps because I know that the first recording of this I died and then we switched to it was like a cut and it'll be when I'm back at the same place after I died what is that room I just ignored the room there must be nothing, nothing in, in the room yeah there is nothing in the room and we know this because we did two takes and we checked that room on the first take and there's fuck all in there so I said don't bother for the second take and I saved a grand total of about five seconds. So, as you can see, there was a bit of a cut there. You might have missed it. Uh, oh, apparently we don't switch to the, uh, the imps. Probably because maybe the amount of enemies in this area was enough to fuck the imps. Uh, that's a possibility. Um, so, when dealing with dogs, just, just wait until they hit your shield. Don't get greedy like what I was doing there. But, uh, aye. So, these misbegotten, like, can gang up on you enough. So, try and take them out one by one. Be careful. Don't rush in. Um, if one, see, that, man, good, good shot, Luteal. Good shot. Yeah, but, yeah, but now Luteal's aggroing every single misbegotten and is just going to get absolutely annihilated by a big squad of them. Ah, oh, he's got a big shield. He'll do fine. But the, the biggest problem here is the fact that um, having a summon out is going to take heat off you, sure, but the summon will almost certainly aggro an amount of these fucking misbegotten, particularly this guy with the long half axe. Um, that's uh, a bit of a problem. So you might be better off without a summon and just being super careful. That way you can uh, aggro them all. Um, maybe with the bow or something like that and kind of pull them that way. That's something that you could certainly do. It's more than one way to skin a cat, as the saying goes. Although, I, can't, I would rather not think about skinning a cat. But yeah, pick up that fire grease. And I think that's the claymore. Yes! Good job, <laughs> memory. Remember Let's go. Item. <laughs> I remember two, actually. There was a fucking golden moon on that rock. Right. I'm proud of you. Um... Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> The Claymore is, generally speaking, a workhorse of a weapon. 
It can take a lot of the same Ashes of War that the likes of the Katana can, or even some of the same Ashes of War as Great Stars later on. So again, good generalist weapon if you wanted something fun to use that's effective throughout your entire playthrough. This is not a bad choice for that. Um, you can come here immediately after leaving the French Folk Hero's Grave, which we'll actually be tackling later in this episode, um, and get it straight away. So you could use that weapon feasibly for your entire playthrough. Now, something to bear in mind, actually, is the golem with the, the giant bow that is outside Castle Morn. The golems can, in fact, drop the weapons that they have. So because that one has the great bow, uh, you could farm for the golem's great bow if you so wanted to. Um, they can also drop uh, golems, magic arrows, they can drop great arrows. Oh, sorry, the... There's only one golem in the game that drops golems magic arrows, so you're never going to be getting them. But uh, they can drop the golem great arrows, generally speaking. Um, so there's Godric soldiers in here. Well, there's a couple of Godric soldiers in here. Um, and they drop the Godric soldier stuff, so that is the Lord Sworn straight sword, the brass shield, Lord Sworn's shield. Apparently they can drop that. Um, don't think I've seen... Oh, that must be the great shield that some of them have sometimes. Um, it is, yeah. Then they can drop the Godric Soldier Helm, you know, the, the whole set, various smith and stones, stuff like that. So this is the Pumpkin Head. Now, they can actually drop the Chain Link Flail, and they can drop the Pumpkin Head piece. Um, I'm assuming they can only drop the Chain Link Flail if they have it, but um, otherwise they can drop the Pumpkin Head, which is kind of cool, I suppose. They also occasionally drop Sanctuary Stones, uh, which is probably what that is. You are correct. Yeah. Um, the pumpkin headpiece is, I think, one of the heavier headpieces in the game, but its defenses are incredible, and it kind of has a unique property as well, in that it reduces damage from headshots. Um, it'll never, ever come up in a standard playthrough. Just heads up, nah. no pun intended. But it is a thing that the headpiece will do, so... <laughs> so, utilising the bow here to... Um get these things attention as you can see you can two shot the misbegotten with the bow so you could in theory have used the bow to um in the big courtyard to take care of an amount of the misbegotten from range and because they're all facing a different way you could bait them out one at a time and have done it that way and i'm kind of surprised we didn't do it that way but fuck it spare the arrows know. i suppose yes yeah, i suppose Obviously, the, the jumping attacks with the bow, particularly good, because you can, like, shoot the arrow and then immediately jump attack. Um, and that's a lot faster than, um, like, just shooting two arrows back to back without jumping. So I think there's a stone sword key down the end here. What's your bets? Smithing stone. Oh. Stone sword key comes stone. later. It's on an awning in, after the uh, point of no return in this dungeon. God, you're correct, aren't you? Bastard. <clears throat> right, Smith and Stone 2, so <laughs> come and pick that one up. Is that going to be a game we play throughout the entire guide? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so now we are heading up to the opposite side of this place's rampart, and then we're going to speak to Edgar, which is Irina's dad. There's also a golden ring on the bridge that we missed. That one's quite like, you can't really see it, to be honest, so I'm not going to blame myself for missing it the first time. Yeah. Um, when you get to um, Irina's dad, Castellan Edgar, uh, he will award you with a sacrificial twig straight away, um, and he says he won't leave the castle without, um, without the treasured sword of Morn, as he puts it, which ends up being the reward you get from the dungeon boss. Um, once you have that, you can come back to him, and that will progress both his quest and Irina's quest, who we met in the last episode. Obviously, we'll be showing you when and where to do that. Wow, I'm having a fucking issue with these guys. <laughs> Thankfully, these are the last enemies between both you and Edgar, and you, and the next... Oh, bye. Uh, <laughs> guys, having a 
bad day. <laughs> it's also the last set of enemies between you and the next grace, so it's no biggie. If you're running out of blue or red even at this point, um, there's another grace really nearby, but to be clear, this grace that we're coming up to in a moment is a point of no return. Once you uh, so, drop sorry, down just there, the you can't actually get back. Sorry. Uh, yes, just a button. You need to give him the the letter that Arena gave you at the start of uh, the Weeping Peninsula. Just so, just to reiterate that. But yeah, now we're coming up to as you said. This is a point in no return. So once you jump over this wall, you can't get back. Really aggravating game design there. I know. I mean, you can't just warp back to the start, but then you need to deal yep. with the enemies again. I was going to say, then you've got to fight your way back through the castle again. That's like anti-progress. <laughs> so now that we have 25 Vigor and 20 Endurance and 17 Mind, we are now going to be upgrading um, our Faith to 15 and Arcane to 12. That is the, the next step in our uh, leveling up journey. Thankfully, 25 Vigor and 20 Endurance will carry us until we need uh, more. But um, the 15 Faith and 12 Arcane is basically... That's like minimum stats for a selection of spells in the game that have an insane amount of utility. So we would highly recommend that almost every build, every playthrough goes to at least those stats or has the capability of reaching those stats via, like, you know, equipment buffs or whatever. Because, frankly, the utility that you get in some of the spells is just kind of crazy. Over the top here, we're going to be grabbing what I believe is the Twinblade Talisman. Now, there are seemingly talismans for each of the major weapon categories. So, Axe Talisman, um, Dagger Talisman, Lance, Twinblade, and each of them have a unique effect that uh, modifies the way that weapons behave slightly. So, the Twinblade Talisman boosts the last attack in an attack chain, so if your weapon has an attack chain of, say, four light attacks, it will make the fourth light attack stronger. Um, it's not really worth equipping, because it's rare that you ever get that fourth attack off. Um, the Axe Talisman, though, boosting your charge attacks, is well worth equipping if you have the spare slot for it. Yeah, that is... That, that's well said. So now we're uh, just carefully dropping onto these rafters and picking up the, the Smith and Stone 2. Um, also, uh, we are opting to roll out of this room um, because you can kind of get swarmed by rats. Oh, I mean, obviously Ground Slam is going to do pretty pretty easy work on them, but in case you don't have Ground Slam, you don't want to get uh, you know attacked off multiple rats. So there's the whip. We're picking that up. I um, don't think I've ever used the whip actually. Not too bad. Um, it's one downside, really, is that it can't take many different Ashes of War. Oh, uh, sure. Um, yeah. So, it's not a particularly versatile weapon, but it does have massive reach, and I think it does exclusively strike damage. So it'd be great versus the minor enemies. Oh, sure, sure. So there's a couple of misbegotten up here, uh, but we're not going to... I mean, you can fight them if you want, but... And we're just going to drop off here just so we can like quickly grab this. This is a little bit of a time save. Somber Smith and Stone 1. So we use the Somber Stones to upgrade the unique weapons in case you don't know that by now. Because um, there's two different kinds of weapons. And the unique, the unique ones you can't change the Ash of War on. So there's a crab that's going to show up here. I think this is Fire Arrows. Let's go. I'm so fucking smart. Um, the crab... I mean, you can avoid it. It's not the biggest deal, but you could just use Ground Slam as well. It's pretty effective on them, actually. God, this misbegotten was keen. Yeah, he's he wants you fucking dead. <laughs> Unlike the jellyfish, because they're they just chilling. They do just be vibing. Um, yeah, when you get to this fog gate, uh, you're at the area boss. Um, which are going to save quit, unload those enemies so they're no That's longer following also... us, and... Yeah, you can summon Castle and Edgar because you've progressed his and Arena's quests by delivering the letter. That lets you summon him for this fight. And he really does just trivialize this fight. Frankly, you don't even need the imps with him, but using yourself and the imps and Edgar, you pretty much can't lose. Uh, to the point, it's actually quite funny. <laughs> Honestly, 
Uh, yeah, this thing just gets absolutely fucking annihilated. <laughs> They're just bullying him. Look at him. He can't do anything. <laughs> Run him for his phones, Edgar. <laughs> Like, why, why was Edgar... He's, like, to make a point, Edgar's just a bad dad, right? Because he could have just fucking done this himself and he's just sitting there up on the rafters just crying. Like, bro, take get your finger out and go and fight the fucking thing. Some people, including Eddie... Look, he just reposted it. What the... <laughs> <laughs> why? Edgar's just cracked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to give you a rundown on the boss in the last 10 seconds, it's quite aggressive and it hits pretty hard, so just don't get hit, I guess. Yeah, summon Edgar. If you're, have, like, if you're having a problem, summon Edgar. There's your fucking solution to that boss. Like, But generally speaking, even if you don't have Edgar, you um, can still, honestly, ass slam and the imps is going to take you pretty far. As you saw, the imps were doing good bleed damage and they were also uh, kind of stunning it a little bit uh, as well, so... Bleed, Ass Slam, Katana, block its attacks. It's, really, it's, it's pretty much just a, a guy with a sword. There's not a whole lot to say about it. One thing I do want to mention, actually, is the weapon we got from it is the Grafted Blade Greatsword. Now, that is one of seven weapons, or possibly nine. I might have to fact check that. But one of a number of weapons that are needed for an achievement to get all of the legendary weapons in the game. We yes, will be picking I'd... them all up. And notably, there is one you can miss when we get to that point. We will mention specifically which one that is and how to make sure you don't miss it. So we came back to Edgar, we exhausted his dialogue, and now we're warped back to the start of the Weeping Peninsula. And if you've done everything correctly like we did, Edgar will be here and Arena is uh, mysteriously dead to a misbegotten, apparently. Except, is she... Oh, guess we'll find out. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> it's a mystery. So we're warping back to Stormhill, and now we are going to take care of this Ever Jail that is in uh, Limgrave. So this guy, like, we would still recommend waiting a little bit longer before tackling this guy. The main reason we can kill him at this point in the game is because we have Aslam, which is uniquely good. Well, uh, uh, this and Lion's Claw is uniquely good at um, defeating these things. Sorry, not Lion's Claw, Prayerful Strike, which is what we end up switching to once we get it. But Ground Slam is incredibly good against these guys, and the technique is you go Ground Slam, get a second Ground Slam in, that will... Okay, so this weird... Right, okay, so generally speaking, the second ground slam will always stun this guy. I do have secondary footage, I'm sure. This Whether is so strange. That <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck is going on? Right, so it's meant it's meant to be two ground slams will stun this thing, and then you can go for the repost. So I could sort of explain a little bit about what happened. Um, the first ground slam you did didn't do enough to um, stagger it because one of the hits of Ground Slam missed. The second one hit fully, but that still wasn't enough to break its stance. The third one broke its stance on the initial hit, and then the downward motion of Ground Slam flattened him out of the, the reposting animation. So strange. Yeah, uh, one of the quirks of using Ground Slam, because it hits multiple times, I guess, just be aware that that's something that can happen. It won't happen often, but when it does, it can be pretty irritating. Now, we talked a lot over this guy's actual attacks. He has some tail swipes, he has a big diving lunge. Okay, so I actually found the footage of the, the, the real Crucible Knight fight, if you want. So... Uh, just to reiterate, all in all, we've got our Physic Flask on, we've put on Golden Vow, and we're hitting them with the Ground Slam. As you saw, that stunned them. And if you get two Ground Slams in a row, you get your counter. Now, we've also got the Red Bandit Knife on. Like the Talisman. Assass Assassin's Crimson Dagger. Yeah, that one. Um, which gives us health back for critical hits. So as you saw, we got even though we took damage from the... Uh, the Crystal Knight during its attacks when we were ground slamming it, it doesn't really matter too much because we were able to get a little bit of that health back uh, on the counter. 
Now, if you do want to heal, use or like red or blue flask, you really want to keep your distance with this guy because these guys have insane input reading, like harder than any other enemy I've ever experienced ever. So as soon as you go to heal, this thing is on your fucking ass. But as you can see, ground slams are really putting in the work, and it's um, it's aspect of the crucible attacks. So these like expanded move set attacks are actually easy enough to dodge. They're they're actually not so bad. I mean, sure they do decent enough damage, but strictly speaking, those attacks are the the least bad of all of its attacks. You just yeah, uh, yeah crucible lights. Crucible lights never really present that much of a threat. Um, at least until you get to altars and you have to fight two of them at once. But even then, we've got our technique for that. There you go. That's that's actually how you defeat. Crucible Knights for most of the game up until we change weapons anyway. Um, largely they're not difficult to avoid, but once he stomps and can use the tail swipes, um, he can finish every combo with the tail. So if you were getting attacks in there before, just be aware that he now has an additional attack on the end of all of his chains. We also put the... Um... Is it the Assassin's Talisman? The Red Assassin Talisman on, which gives us health back on critical hits for fighting that guy as well. Um, because obviously... Assassin's uh, Crimson Dagger. It's that, called. thank you, yeah. So, okay, so we've came back to Fringe Folk Hero's Grave, and we've used the stone, we've used the stone sword keys to open up the... Uh, the gate, I guess. So, when you come here, you want to be careful. You don't get hit by that thing. Um, what, obviously... Once it rolls away, you can then start pursuing it. And then you can jump into these alcoves. And when you get to this alcove, uh, you can now... Um, so it's the one with the guy in it. But you can now drop off of this one. And make sure it is this one. And not the the one that's above. Because the one that's above, like before the one we drop down from, will just you'll take a bunch of damage from that fall. So once the chariot is past you, you can uh, run down here. Sadly, I kind of fucked that up a little bit. But then you... Uh, it's, a bit, it's a tight drop, then you can drop off the side there. So now you'll notice... Um, yeah, you'll notice unlike the imps in the rest of Limgrave, these are not um, almost dead to the single guard counter. They have yeah. still about two thirds of their health remaining, and that's what we were talking about in part one, when we mentioned that this area is a notably higher level than the rest of Limgrave. And even then, it's still probably a little bit higher level than would be ideal. So theoretically, if you've struggled with the um, the Ever Jail, if you've struggled with this. Um, you could theoretically come back here after you've done Stormvale and probably have an easier time. I think this is the first imp you've encountered that has the forked greatsword. Yes, um, yes. So, notably, the ones with the forked greatsword can drop the forked greatsword, or the ones with the forked hatchet will drop the forked hatchet. Yeah. Uh, they'll also drop their headpiece of the appropriate type, so that's the cat, the fang, the long tongue, the wolf. Uh, and then they can drop a bunch of other shite, like smoldering butterfl butterflies and glintstone fireflies and fulgur blooms, mushrooms, various smithing stones. Um, so that's what imps can drop. Uh, the headpieces are okay. They're aight. They each give you a stat boost. Hi everybody, Edit and Tony here. So the item we're about to pick up is the Erdtree's Favour, and that is by and far the best talisman we could possibly get at this point in the game. It increases our health and endurance and our carry weight, so make sure to put that on as soon as you can, and then once we get a second talisman pouch, we will put on the Radigan Source Seal, but for now, stick this on. This is a very good item. Oh, so quickly, um, so you just want to run across this bridge and ignore these two enemies. So get your shield up, blast across the bridge, and then just, you have to roll close to this edge, because if you just drop off, you'll take a huge amount of damage, you'll probably die. But, um, so you have to do quite exactly what we did there. 
But otherwise, do not fight both of those things. That, that would barely be worth it at the end of the game. Not now. Yeah. I mean, we pretty much intentionally died to the Grafted Scion boss right at the start. So yeah. fighting two of them after doing only one major area, that's just a no-go. So this guy can be a little bit of a pain in the ass. actually. He does hit quite hard. Um, and obviously Ground Slam, like most things, can mitigate a lot of the difficulty. But you definitely want to time it pretty well. Um, because again, you know, he can like tank your hits. I mean, look, a normal hit is doing barely any damage to them. However, we do get a Stone Sword key from that, so that's pretty good. Also, uh, so, now you whip out the bow. You pretty much have to have a bow for this. And we have to time this hitting the chariot. Now, if you shoot an arrow at that middle pot when the screen starts to shake, uh, and that's like when it comes up this hill and attempts to turn around, it'll, it'll shake the screen when it does that. If you shoot an arrow then, it should time it with the pot dropping on it. And that is how you get that great bow that it dropped, which I can't remember the name of. A trigger it, bow. Thank you. You do actually get three attempts, so to speak, at... Uh, yes, because there's three pots, so you can try it three times. Yes, so if for whatever reason it doesn't work first try, you do get another two attempts. So what you saw there was us deliberately dying to that enemy, because that will reset our um, flasks for this boss. Now this boss is definitely uh, stronger than where we are currently, uh, so just bear that in mind. We're going to summon Lutil because he will be able to tank more hits than the imps can at this stage. And uh, this is an ulcerated tree spirit. Now, their attacks are less deadly than the animations make them seem. Uh, they move about a lot, but despite that, they don't hit you with most of their movement. So that is just something to bear in mind. Um, and there's really only two things to watch out for this guy. Um, his other attacks are pretty easy to dodge, um, but it's this. He'll scream at you, and then he will sort of dodge away and lunge at you. You want to look out for the scream, and that is when you should be getting prepared to dodge. And then once he lunges at you, if he doesn't grab you, he'll lunge past you and then start spitting out some fire. Now, this is the other thing you want to uh, watch out for, and it's actually kind of surprisingly hard to get out the way of once it starts glowing. But once it starts glowing, it is going to explode, and then it's going to power up. And, um, I mean, once it's powered up, it's just kind of par for the course. Again, um, so we managed, we did manage to stun it there with uh, Ground Slam, so that's pretty good. But, Basically, the only two things you need to watch out for is that scream, the subsequent grab attack, and this explosion. Because um, its other attacks are basically fine and easy to dodge. A couple Hopefully of we can show little you. tip. I was going to say, a couple of little tips for fighting this. Um, they are exceptionally weak to fire damage. So if you have fire damage of any kind, it will make it easier. Um, and another thing to note would be when it does the charge up explosion and um, there is an explosion centered on the tree spirit itself and a bunch of pillars will pop out of the ground if you are too close to get away from it just let the explosion hit you because if you block the explosion and it breaks your guard and then a pillar hits you the pillar will do way more damage and might in fact one shot you at this stage in the game Wow, good arm on that guy. Fucking hell. So, we've ran all the way up to this top part of the French Folk Heroes Grave. And here we're going to get an item that we are going to use excessively for most of the game. Uh, if we defeat this guy, he will drop the uh, Dragon Talisman. Dragon Communion Seal. Thank you. I'm just going to call it the Dragon Talisman. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Ground Slam, obviously putting in the work yet again. You do need to time your Ground Slams with Great Shield enemies a little bit more than the other enemies in the game. But otherwise, Ground Slam does make it achievable. However, you definitely need to quit out before you fight this guy and load back in because he is actually quite 
difficult to do when there's a bunch of other guys trying to attack you. Surprise, surprise. So we're going to pop the rest of our souls, and then we're going to level up, and we're now about to do the main area boss, which is Margit. Now, at this point in the game, we are beyond over-equipped for dealing with Margit. Uh, if you've done everything we've done, he will be a fucking walk in the park. Now, we're leveling Faith up to 12. And obviously, any levels that you put up will increase your defense passively, so... There's kind of almost no wasted levels, really. So, um, don't worry about being like, oh, I wish I had more health or whatever. You're going to be fine if you've done what we've done. So, before we entered the boss fight, you saw a um, golden summon sign on the floor outside. That is Sorcerer Roger. The game gives you him guaranteed if you come here at any point. So, if you are struggling, the game does give you a little bit of help in the form of Roger. So, what we done here was we came in immediately, used the imps, and then used um, Golden Vow to buff the imps. Now, you can use the Margit Shackle item, and then that will pin him to the floor for a while. Now, this will allow you and the imps to get in a bunch of free hits. And as you saw, what happened is you just do a whole fuck ton of bleed damage to him. And if you get two of them... Two of them and a ground slam pretty much puts them to this much health. So, yeah, market just ain't a problem, realistically speaking. Not only yeah, that, you... you have your bubble shield and you have your health regen from the physic flask. So, you, you should be having an okay time. If you get him to this stage and you're struggling to kill him when he's at about 10% health, uh, just uninstall the game. <laughs> Or, I mean, you could also, like, grind for souls, I guess, if you really no, have No, 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 just uninstall. Oh, okay. The guy can't help you. Now, we do have some more footage here. Uh, when it, so, uh, so after this, there is another um, showing off doing Margit. Now, Margit, is, uh, his attacks are fairly easy to dodge. I personally feel that dodging into his attacks, particularly that big hammer slam, is the better way of doing it. Um... I mean, that was a bit of a horrendous wind-up on that attack, I'll give you that. But really, our strategy for Margit is to just blast him with damage, uh, like straight off the bat, and then just use Ground Slam. And Ground Slam does the same thing that it does to other enemies, where it will um, stagger his poise, so you can get critical hits in. So it's, uh, it's good in that front as well. I mean, that's a good chunk of damage right there. That's a good chunk. Yeah, very respectable. Um, you do have other options. The Unsheathe Ash of War is good against him because every hit with Unsheathe will also build up bleed. It does decent posture damage. There's two versions of the attack. Um, Marga is very strong to holy damage. Um, so Sacred Blade's not really going to do you any good here. Um, yeah, there's, you've, you've got options at this stage in the game. Like, you, you've picked up enough items, there's enough weapons laying around that you can try different strategies against him. You can acquire the shackle, you can summon for him, you could try Lutel against him. You really so, do have every option available to you at this point. Yeah, uh, jump attacks with... So for some reason the Margit Shackle failed there, that sucked, but jump attacks with... Why did that fail? It's in um, stage two. Once he's in well, phase so, two, the shackle no longer works. Well, he went to phase two very quickly. Um, so, in, th in this version, you saw the ground slap. Wow, wow we've done a lot of damage to that quickly. Jesus Christ. So, your other option is to summon the Rotten Stray. Uh, you can indeed rot Margit, and then that will do a bunch of damage to him. So, there is a lot of different things that you can do here, but the most effective one literally is this. Um... So now that we've got a Talisman Pouch, we can put on the Air Tree's Favor and Radigan Sword Seal. This gives us a huge boost to our stats at this point in the game. Absolutely amazing. More, more endurance, more health, more carry weight. Everything we need. And um, yeah, so that is, that's Margit. That is our stats. And that is part five. And okay, there we go. That's Weeping Peninsula done. Join us in part six where we're going to be doing Stormvale Castle. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do 
is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.